Hi, welcome to a new IDS webcast. Now we're going to review seborrheic keratosis and sore lentigo. I have no conflicts of interest. Seborrheic keratosis and sore lentigos are one of the most commonly acquired benign tumors. The frequency of seborrheic keratosis and sore lentigos increases with age, being fairly uncommon on young patients, but increasing to almost 100% in adults older than 75 years old. They are both originated from the clonal expansion of somatically mutated epidermal keratinocytes, and thus they are not a reactive epidermal hyperplasia. There is a continuum between sore lentigo, flat seborrheic keratosis, and seborrheic keratosis, and at any point you can have a lichen planus like keratosis or LPLK, which will be reviewed in another webcast. Usually, the diagnosis of sore lentiginous and seborrheic keratosis is easy by the naked eye alone, but sometimes it's very challenging and we need dermoscopy to avoid doing biopsies. Let's start with sore lentigo. The clinical appearance of sore lentigo can resemble melanoma, mainly of the lentigo maligna type, but with dermoscopy, we can easily see some features that can orientate us between seborrheic keratosis or lentigo maligna. And what are these dermoscopic features associated with sore lentigo? Well, we have the fine lines, which could be straight, slightly curved, long, short, or parallel, and the metaphoric term for this, which is fingerprinting. The borders are usually well demarcated, often scalloped, or moth-eaten. We have also diffused light brown structureless areas and symmetric follicular pigmentations. Let's start with the fine lines. These are straight, slightly curved, long, short, and parallel, that can resemble sometimes a reticular pattern. Uh, the lines are due to the elongation of the red ridges and an increase in pigmentation in the keratinocytes of the basal layer, that's the histopathologic correlation. Fingerprinting is the metaphor to describe these serpiginous fine lines that are seen in this picture, and they also correlate with these elongated red ridges with pigmentation on histopathology. The borders of soil and tigos are usually well demarcated, often scalloped or moth eaten. We can also see a structureless pattern, which is made of diffused light brown structureless areas. But if you see in this photo, we also have the well demarcated borders or sharp, sharp demarcated borders. This for me is the toughest of all because it's the thing that can be confused with lentigo maligna and it's a symmetric follicular pigmentation. This typically occurs on the face and this is pigmentation surrounding the sweat glands and follicular openings that accentuate these structures, forming circles and rings, creating also an annular pattern. But these circles are symmetric in contrast to lentigo maligna, which, are, which have asymmetric pigmentation. This is a summary of all we have discussed for soil lentigo, and now we're going to see some examples. This is a soil lentigo, uh, where you can see here the sharp border is very clear, the moth eaten or sharp border. It's also very clear the symmetric follicular pigmentation in this lesion, and also the homogeneous brown color. Another example of a sore lentigo where you can have the curved fine lines. In this case, you could also call this fingerprinting, and also a sharp border. And finally, in this example, we have the scallop border or sharp borders or moth eaten borders. We have the fine interrupted lines, the fine slightly curved lines, and the fine straight, straight lines. All of these together form the fingerprinting uh, structures. Let's see now the severe keratosis and what are the dermoscopic features associated with a severe keratosis. And again, we have here the sharply demarcated or scalloped borders, the media like cysts, the comedial like openings, the fissures or sulci, and the ridges or gyri, the herping vessels, the vessels surrounded by a white halo, and the fat fingers. The combination of fissures or sulci and ridges or gyri is what we call the cerebriform appearance that we're going to review in a few slides. So the sharply demarcated borders or scallop borders is this abrupt ending with no transition from severe keratosis to normal skin. And this on, is the correlation on histopathology of this abrupt ending of the acanthotic epidermis. Then we have the media-like cyst, which are round, one translucent structures uh, that are better seen with non polarized light, and these white structures uh, are also being called like stars in the sky. We have the comedial like openings, which are these brown oval curtain field structures. And it's important to recognize these two structures because the histopathologic uh, uh, correlation is very similar. So, media like cysts are correlated with intraepidermal keratin horn pseudocysts, 
and the community-like openings are these skirting field epidermal invaginations that are open to the to the air, right, to the outer space. So they are basically the same, the comida-like openings and the milia-like cysts, but one are enclosed in the epidermis and the others are open uh, to the outside or the air. Then we have the sulcider fissures, which are these linear curtain field structures that are seen as elongated brown-black structures and they curated with deep invagination of the epidermis filled with keratin. And then we have the GRI uh, or ridges, which are these raised projected structures and are the negative image of the sulci. Uh, so the sulci are these deep imaginations with keratin. And the top of this imagination that goes up is the GRI or ridges. And then the combination of these two features uh, is what we call the cereriform appearance. So when you have multiple sulci, these fissures, so the deep uh, uh, imaginations, and the GRI, the top part of these imaginations, this can resemble uh, the sulci and GRI of the brain, and this has been called the cereriform appearance in the metaphoric terminology. The vessels of uh, several keratosis are pretty characteristic and are these herping vessels, which are these twisted loop vessels that resemble a herping. Uh, in this photo here, you have also milia like cysts, you have comida like openings, and the vessels all resemble these herping vessels. Uh, this is one of the best examples I've ever seen, and here I highlighted for you the herping vessels, which are very, very uh, characteristic of several keratosis. And if you look this carefully, these vessels, these fine vessels are surrounded by a white halo. And this halo is produced because of the raised projections of the keratinocytic tumor, creating this halo effect around the blood vessels. Let's see some examples. This is a photo with non polarized slide where you can see the comida like openings, the milia like cyst, and the sharp demarcated borders. Here I have the same photo with polarized slide, and you can see how the milia like cyst tends to look uh, more fainter or less uh, clear. In this example, we have GRI and sulci, and as I told you, the combination of both is what we have called the cerebriform appearance or cerebriform pattern. And in this slide, we have a summary of all the structures of cerebral ketosis. Let's see some special variants of these two lesions. And we have the ink spot lentigo and the clonal cerebral ketosis. The ink spot lentigo, this is a benign skin lesion typically seen in young patients. It's clinically brown to black, making it worrisome for melanoma, sometimes also for pigmented BCC in dark skin types. And it correlates with lentigo simplex on histopathology, which is a slight increase in the number of melanocytes with no nesting. So the clinical appearance, I told you, is this dark color and irregular outline lesion that stands out when you see it. But under the microscope, we have the network with thin and thick lines that, that can be dark brown or black in color. And this network, network is, uh, it looks like it's falling apart. Look at this. So the, the network is trying to like disperse towards the periphery. And this is classic of ink spot lentigo. Here's an example. You see the clinical lesion, very dark, very concerning. Could be a melanoma, also a pigmented BCC. But when you look at this, the lesion stands out for you. And under microscopy, you have these thin and thick lines, brown and black. And look how the network is falling apart. It's dispersing towards the periphery. Uh, and also stands out when you see it. It's very, very, very uh, clear. So as I told you, you have this network with thin and thick lines, brown, dark color and the network is falling apart. More examples on the lower corner uh, with this network with thin and thick lines and brown and dark, uh, dark brown in color. So this is very characteristic. When you see it one, you, you, once, you'll always recognize it. And then we have the clonal severe keratosis that for me is the toughest of all of these lesions. So the clonal severe keratosis is an uncommon variant of severe keratosis that is usually pigmented. On histopathology, the hallmark is the presence of this sharply demarcated infraepithelial nest of basaloid cells or Bors jarasson phenomenon, and this may represent a dermoscopic pitfall. Uh, there are few dermoscopic uh, studies, but there's this beautiful case series of nine cases that show that milia like cysts and sharp demarcated borders were seen in all cases, but they all also had these confounding features, which could be these large brown globular like structures that mimic melanoma or these bluish global structures that mimic BCC. So here are the nine examples. On the top row, you can see all these lesions may mimic BCC with these globules or concentric structures. On the lower part of the photo, uh, shows these lesions that may mimic melanoma. So this is a case of an 88-year-old woman with a recent treatment for an acral melanoma, and she was referred for a full body examination. She had this isolated pigmented lesion on the right flank, very worrisome for melanoma. On the microscopy, we had this blue-white veil, with these globular-like structures and with polarized dermoscopy, uh, the lesion also has shiny white lines, so it was very worrisome for melanoma. 
but the biopsy uh, was characteristic of clonal cell brachiatosis with the sharp demarcated intraepithelial nest of basaloid cells or Borges-Jarasson phenomenon. So you know uh, clonal cell brachiatosis is very hard to diagnose. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, don't hesitate emailing me.